In this video, we are going to cover the instrumental variables approach. So when to use instrumental variables? Well, we have a variable y, and we have a variable x, and x has some effect on y. And there is another variable u that we don't observe that also has an effect on y. The problem is, when these two variables are correlated, we cannot isolate the effect of x on y, so we can't estimate it. Mathematically, the problem is when the expectation of u, given x, is not zero. So what we want to do is find another variable, z, that we will call an instrument, that is correlated with x, but not with u. By doing so, intuitively, we'll have z that has some effect on x, or that's just correlated with x, and we can isolate some variation of x that are explained by z, and we can use this part of the variation on y to estimate the effect of x on y. Because when that changes, we have x that changes, but not u. So mathematically, we would say that an instrument The, so the instrument is called Z, it satisfies two conditions. We need some covariance between X and Z. And we need the covariance between U and Z to be zero. Sorry, here, of course, it's different from zero. So let's go over the derivation. We have our model. Let's take a, let's take just a simple linear model. Y equal beta zero plus beta one x plus u. And we have z such that the covariance between x and z is not zero, and the covariance between u and z is zero. So I'm going to take the covariance between y and z. So on the other side we have covariance beta zero plus beta one x plus u and z. I'm going to apply some rules concerning the covariance to split this. So we have the covariance between beta 0 and z plus the covariance between beta 1 and x, uh, sorry, beta 1x and z plus the covariance between u and z. By de definition or by assumption, we have covariance between u and z is zero. The covariance between a constant and a random variable is also zero. So we just have covariance beta one x plus z. And I can take the beta, oh sorry. Of course, it's not plus z, it's comma z. And I'm going to take the beta 1 out. So again, that's a rule concerning the covariance. And this covariance is different from 0. So I'm just going to solve this for beta 1, so I have beta 1 equals covariance between y and z over covariance between x and z. So I just take the covariance here and put it on the other side. Then I'm going to take the sample analog or sample counterpart
which is, so we'll call it beta 1 hat, sum of y minus y bar times z minus z bar over sum of x minus x bar z minus z bar and here I can also add a 1 over n 1 over n and we recognize the formula for the sample covariance between y and z and the formula for the sample covariance between x and z the 1 over n here is not necessary but we are going to use it for the proof so we know that the top part here so let's take the plim of beta 1 hat the top part converges to the covariance of y and z and the bottom part converges to the covariance between x and z and we have the rule for um, convergence in probability if we have the top part that converge to something and the bottom part that converge to something different from zero we can just take um, the ratio of the converging convergence point so this is uh, plim of 1 over n sum of y minus y bar z minus z bar over 1 over n sum of x minus x bar z minus z bar So the rule, I can write it as the plim 1 over n sum of y minus y bar z minus z bar over the plim 1 over n sum of x minus x bar z minus z bar so the, basically the rule can simply be remembered as the plim of a ratio is the ratio of the plims. This is covariance yz over covariance xz, which is beta 1, as we showed before. So beta 1 hat, using an instrumental variable, is a consistent estimator of beta 1. So we just used rules you're very familiar with. Uh, but just remember, that's very important, that in instrument you need an effect between x and z and no effect between z and z error. Once you have that, everything is automatic.